Hello guys, welcome back to my second C Sharp tutorial. And today we are want to look at the main function. Uh, first of all, maybe some guys noticed that if they installed Visual Studio from um, episode 1, that they don't have these um, gray and these cyan line here this lines um, or also uh, this color might be different uh, that's because I have a Visual Studio extension uh, installed called Visual Power Tools I guess and yeah it's easier to read the code than to see the brackets okay well um, Let's get started. First of all, uh, as you guys should know, the main function is start from our program. Um, the main function is from the type void and it's marked as static. So that means void is, uh, you can see it here, uh, specifies a return value for uh, return value type for a method that does not return a value so we don't need to return a value here like that this will cause an error because um, yeah we can return 0 because we have void here and not an integer but we can't we'll come to that later uh, the second thing static means that the method um, is or the method cannot access non-static members from the class like I'll declare my um, um, simple list I'll my list Equals here. Okay. So this list is non-static because it's not marked as static. So we cannot access that list in our main function. If we look my list dot add you are cool. This will not work because yeah not static it will not say that yeah an object reference is required for the non-static field method or property okay uh, but first of all that's only some little basic things you should know about your main function uh, we will look at this uh, parameter string array arguments later um yeah so the first thing is how do we write something in our console because if we see we started it will close immediately um in the dotnet framework there's a class called console that's in the system namespace console and this class provides us some informations about our console if we are working. So we say console dot. Console is a class and with dot we can access properties like the background color, methods like beep or clear, and events like cancel key press. Uh, we will focus today on console.writeline. You see if I hover over it here, uh, void console.writeline string format params object array arc. And this method is 18 times overloaded. So that means if I open this, we have a lot of parameters we can do in here. We can do, uh, we can parse in no parameters, we can 
uh, parse a string in here. This will always this will all work. Okay, so first of all, what is a string? A string is basically a text. And yeah, we will work with strings a lot. That's why I explained you that at the beginning of this series. Uh, yeah, a string is basically a text. So we declare us a local variable string uh, my variable equals and then we can write something in here hi max for example uh, you will see that uh, we get here a warning from visual studio uh, string my variable uh, is assigned but its value is never used uh, so Visual Studio is telling us hey man I see you have a variable there but you never use it so you don't really need it but not important for us at the moment so that's basically how you um, create a string so console.writeline you are cool we will do that and if you see the console opens and closes immediately but why um, let's do this in um, step by step mode I press F11 and then I can see my program is at the moment there where the little arrow is and the yellow marked line. I press 11 again and I see my var is null at the moment so it's declared but it doesn't have a um, address in the memory. I press 11 again then I can see my variable is now assigned to high max and now we are doing console.writeline so this will write a line on our console and we press 11 again and you see the line is, uh, is written on the console as we can see it here and the program closes immediately because the method ends so the program ends how can we uh, prevent that from how can we prevent that uh, console from closing? Simply if we put uh, console.readline. Console.readline is returning a string. You can see that in the return value, string console.readline. And if you start a program now, you will see that urcool is printed out on the console and uh, now the console stays open because our program is now waiting at console.readline uh, that we write something in here for example if I, if I write now hi max and I press enter the console will close I can also write nothing in there um now we can see that we have the string my var here we have already declared it and if we say console.writeline my var because it's our local variable and we're trying to print out this you see the the warning here should be gone if we debug it and you see the console will write hi max so what are we doing here? We are saying that we will store the text hi max in a variable in a string variable called my var. And now we say console.writeline my var. So that means um, the console will uh, 
knows that the variable my var is assigned to high max. So it will be okay. You will uh, you want that I write the content of my var, and that is if I look up high max. So I'll write high max. Uh, we can also do it in some other way. If we copy console.readline here and oops and we are pasting this in here because we know readline is returning a string so this will not give us an error and we start it the program will wait at this line until we uh, press the enter key uh, I'll pray I'll place a breakpoint here a breakpoint is similar um, to yeah it, it's a stop so if your code gets to this line if your program gets to this line uh, the compiler or the uh, program will stop so I can see what's in my var and that stuff so if I press enter now you will see console.readline we pressed enter this method will exit and is returning us a string in our case it's an empty string because um, we didn't wrote anything in the console and if we continue this you will see nothing will be written to the console because it's empty uh, if we do that again and we are saying you are cool in the console and we press enter then it saved you are cool in my var and if you print out my my var then we see you are cool uh, we see it two times right now because first we wrote it and we pressed enter so it's not cleared we can if you don't want that you can set a console.clear this will delete all the informations on the display uh, you are cool and we press enter we come to our breakpoint we continue it and you will see it printed out you are cool um, as you may notice, console.clear is returning void, so we can't do this. You see, you get, a, you get an error because you cannot convert the type void into a string. That's not possible. Um, yeah, what if we declare our function but um, we declare our uh, not our function our method but um, we never assign a value to it you see we get an error down here because it's a local variable and Visual Studio knows now oh man you can't do that you assign a variable but it has no address in memory so you cannot use it until you assign it um, we can do it uh, if we set the value to null null is basically um, um, it's a keyword that is um, that is an empty memory address so if the my variable value is null then if we I'll explain it in another way this string my var is the same as this uh, Visual Studio is but Visual Studio doesn't know that at the moment because we use the equals um, sign here so Visual Studio is now knowing 
okay my var equals you assign it to something and it's your problem um, what you assign here so you will notice that we get an error now if we start our program because um, this my variable is assigned to null so it has no address in the memory and we can't write something that isn't in the memory oops we should get an error here oh no oh Visual Studio is that clever and writes an empty string if the error is not okay I didn't know that but um, we can force an exception here if we set both of these values to null. If we start it now, you see this will cause an argument null exception and it says um, the value um, cannot be null. So null is null and null is null. So we can't write null in this case. Um, yeah, that should be enough. In the next tutorial, I'll um, tell you something about comments and uh, summaries from a method that's not very important right now uh, that's not important for you that you write it but uh, it's important for if you write a class or um, a function you don't need a summary normally because you know what you are writing there but uh, if you're using the .NET framework like the console class or console.writeLine you will see um, that it is important that you know something about the method, what the method is doing and stuff like that. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have, a subscribe to Linky would be nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Like I said, next episode, summary and comments. So, see you in the next episode. Bye.